What's up, everyone? Welcome in to Team Stanio Live. Happy to have you in here. Happy to be here. My name's Eric Stanio. We at Team Stanio, where we are hel helping families find their home and strengthen their family. Got a lot on the docket tonight. Excited to talk about the hot, hot, hot real estate market in Cincinnati and what that means. Or is it cooling this fall? We'll get into that. Um, but we're going to take a look at what it's doing nationally. I've uh, got some articles on that. We're going to look at what does that mean in terms of the inventory and what home builders are doing, home builder optimism. That's on the docket tonight. Then we're also going to look at a new builder tonight, one we don't talk about much on the channel or haven't yet, but um, they're a very good builder and they're out in uh, Rivers Point, which we've done several videos on. And so we're going to get into that neighborhood and where it's at. It's very exciting coming up and it's uh, closer into downtown Cincinnati. And also um, a new exciting development on the West End. So over by FC Cincinnati, we're going to talk about that as well. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Um, I had a great day. We um, had, a, had some time with the church this morning and went from there, went to my in-laws house. We're actually sadly saying goodbye to them because they're moving to Florida. So um, we were kind of doing a farewell to their house for our kids to kind of let them see that all the furniture is gone and Mimi and Grumps are heading down to Florida. So kind of a sad day, but also a great day uh, at the same time. Then we came home and we're kind of like taking a lot of their furniture to our house. So we're working on that still in our house, but make sure you say, um, say hello. Let us know where you're watching from. Uh, feel free to answer any questions. Uh, Shana, what is up? Yes. Did you all get back into the MLS? Kind of. Um, thanks for asking that question, Shana. We the um, we launched a new MLS this uh, in Cincinnati. I'm going to get into that. I was going to show that later on the show, but we could do that now. Um, so what's kind of happening is we have access to the old MLS, but since that system is old and busted and still cyber attacked, we the Cincinnati MLS had a new system in the wings called Perchwell, which they were moving over to. And uh, they launched it this week. They did some training. They launched it. And in fact, let me let me go ahead and show that while we're while we're in here. Uh, give me one second. And then we'll get into some of our. But here is Perchwell. So um, I'm everyone's still figuring out. They're like, we want to wait because we don't know if agents know what they're doing, which we don't really. But they did a training for this, guys. And in like one second, I realized like, oh, it's a website that works. Fantastic. Like it, it's so much. It's clearly 100 times better. But you'll see, you know, down here, the listed is only 57 in contract 32. So basically an, a migration is happening this week where everyone's moving from the old system to the new. You know, the downside to, you know, the plus side is we have a new system. It's great. We're all figuring it out. You know, what, what people have been doing, what I've been doing with my listings the last few weeks is been putting them on the Dayton MLS and everyone's feeds that have been coming from the Cincinnati MLS in terms of new properties that are hitting your client portals. That, that's been old data. So now that we've got a new system, we're rolling it out. Unfortunately, it's not moving over all the data from your client portal into the new one, as far as I can tell. So basically, you know, we probably had, I don't know, hundreds, I don't know, 150, 200 different client portals where people were just sending them properties. Not all of them are like ready to buy, but some of them, uh, you know, they're, they're kind of getting a feel for the market, see what's out there. Maybe they're 30, uh, you know, three months, six months, nine months down the road. But we basically have to recreate all of those search portals in the new system now. So we've got a new MLS. We can actually put new listings on it, which is great. We can change prices and mark them pending and sold and all that good stuff that we need to do in an MLS that agents need to do. Um, but it's basically, it just rolled out at the end of last week, I think on Thursday. And so everyone's getting used to it. Everyone's kind of migrating everything over. So that's where, that's where that is at. I want to talk uh, briefly before we get into the articles of the night. Also just a little bit about team Stanio update. It was a very fun week. Uh, we had a lot of exciting things happen. We had a first time home buyer close on his house here in Cincinnati. And that's always super fun. Cause it's like, you've been renting for however long and you, you buy your first house. So that was super fun. We had a, we also had a first time investor, uh, well, yeah, first time in at least investing in Cincinnati, but uh, some friends of the show, some some subscribers, they might be watching right now, and uh, they live in Oregon, and they had had a friend who invested in Cincinnati because they knew that the cash flows were good, that properties are affordable, 
and they bought a duplex sight unseen with the help of Team Sanyo. So they closed on their property. They also flew into town to see it, got to meet them. That was a blast. Super fun. Um, what else did we have this week? We had a, we've got a family who's moving here from New York. So, um, they kind of live on long Island and they sold their home and they were going to buy again, but like the, the rates went up, they got kind of priced out and they're like, Oh my gosh. And then they kind of thought to themselves, the, to themselves, why are we living here? Like, do we need to live here? Do we need to buy, you know, whatever we can buy with our money here in New York when we could go and start in a new city. And so they did their research they came across the channel as well. And they're like, we we're landing on Cincinnati. It looks awesome. So they came in and on Friday, we got to show them several houses in union. They're looking at new construction as well. Um, but that's, that's a common story. We hear a lot of people who are like, man, I can take my job with me and I can buy this 1800 foot house, maybe in New York, or I can buy like a 3,200 square foot home in Cincinnati or Northern Kentucky for the same amount of money nice neighborhood, you know, and great place to raise your family. So that was really cool. We're working with them. Um, excited. It was really fun meeting them. Uh, they've got their own YouTube channel, cooking channel, which is awesome. And uh, they're, they're coming in here. So that's really fun. And then we had, uh, and I'm just kind of giving you guys some examples here of uh, what it's like here every week. Cause it was fun and this normally happens, but we also had a grandma who's moving from Maine to be by her daughter and her grandkids and we were showing her condos. We got on her contract on a condo last night in Ludlow, Kentucky at, uh, river, uh, what is it? Rivers breeze is the name of the community up on the Hill. It's got views of the Ohio river in downtown Cincinnati. A uh, really awesome place. She got a great condo, a good deal for about 200. Um, and it offers a lot of amenities in that neighborhood. Now she's 12 minutes from her grandkids. And, uh, so that was fun. And so I, I say all that not to, I'm not trying to brag or say, you know, we're amazing. But just to give you, you know, what does it look like for people who are moving here? I think when I think of this channel and what's happening to people who reach out, that's that's a very common week, <laughs> I feel like, of first time. So local people who were helping, um, you know, we, and we've got other buyers since so we had other sellers who were helping here locally uh, with a couple listings and investment properties and 1031s. We have someone with their first time home buyer. We've got an investment investor from out of town. We've got a family moving here from maybe a place that's a little bit more expensive, but they're like, no, I want to raise my family in Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky. And then we've got another family piece of grandparents where that, that can happen as well. All super exciting. Uh, and it all makes sense to me. You know, I talk about Cincinnati at large and, and our mission at my business at Team Stanio, we've got a belief of, we believe that home is where families grow strong together. That's kind of like an internal saying. I say all the time, I've said it on the channel a lot. Home is where your family grows strong. And uh, so our, our tagline is we're going to help you find your home and strengthen your family. That's what we want to do. It's a really it's a really big blessing. It's a really big privilege to get to be a part of, of someone's life, of their housing decision, which is a really big deal. You know, whether you're looking to sell a house or buy a house, it's generally, you know, some of the top, if not the top financial decisions you're making in your life. And so, um, and we get to be a part of that. And what I really love about this city in particular, because people can move all over the country, obviously, for various reasons, is this is a great place to raise a family. This is a great place where there's economic stability. This is a great place that's affordable. This is a great place where there's there's arts and sports and parks and a great culinary scene. There's there's a lot of good things going for Cincinnati. It's a great place to invest <laughs> because it's it's affordable and there's still cash flows. Um, and you're not priced out because BlackRock hasn't completely dominated here. Um, it, it's like we're kind of under the radar. And we often say, you know, in terms of our pros and cons videos and things we say, it's like it's a big it's a big city with a small town feel. And there's a few other places like that around the U.S., but you've got all the big city amenities, but it kind of flies under the radar a little bit. I'm not saying it's going to do that forever. I think at some point that's not going to happen and we might be. Um, I don't know. It, it might blow up a little bit more on a national level, but for now it's like, if you live here, you're like, Oh, this place is great. <laughs> and I love living here. I love raising my family here. Um, I love working here, whether you're a young professional, I, I want to retire there. There's a lot of reasons to be here. And, um, you know, when you look at Cincinnati nationally, it kind of ranks average on a lot of the rankings in terms of population, in terms of maybe affordability or medium income or crime or schools or different things you might be looking at. But it's, it's, um, 
you know, and, and in terms of when markets go up and down, it's it never rises too, too high, or at least it hasn't when I've seen. And but it also never goes down too too low. So it's a very stable. I always say like the Ohio River is like the stabilizing force. It's stable in the economy, it's stable in the housing market, it's it's stable in a lot of ways. And for people who want some stability, I think it's a great city to move to. That's that's one thing that I think is really awesome. And it's you know, this month has been very hot, but another reason why a lot of people like moving here is the four seasons. And we were just talking about that in our, uh, we had kind of a time of thankfulness in our church service this morning. And uh, one of the things someone said, actually it was my wife, she's really smart and beautiful and uh, I love everything about her. But she said that uh, I love the four seasons here and you don't, you don't get that everywhere. And it, she wasn't just saying that, um, Yes, when it's a hot August, you know fall is coming where it's cooler, and that's true. But the fact that be, living in a place that has four seasons allows you to kind of not get stuck in a rut too much because something is going to change, right? Pretty soon here, uh, and it's already starting already, um, on Friday night, I could sit on my front porch, and right across the street from me uh, is in, in Fort Thomas was a big Highlands Cub Calf game, uh, which is a local uh, local high school football um, rivalry. And I'm hearing the crowds cheer and I'm hearing the snare drums and that part of living here in Northern Kentucky, Cincinnati is awesome. Um, like, because you know, fall is coming Friday night football is here. Weather's going to get cooler. Bengals going to start here. We just finished the preseason. No crazy injuries. Uh, Osai get better. Um, but yeah, just a fun time of year. And th that happened. Then you roll into winter, then spring comes and you're like, Oh my gosh, spring. Uh, and summer, you know, have, you have all the fun in the summer, which you just had. So you don't get that in Florida. You don't get that in Texas. And, you know, in the Northern States, Michigan, New York, Minnesota, you know, Oregon, Washington, you, you have some harsher winters as well. So I, I, I love that about this city as well. Okay. So that's on the docket. Um, and now I want to jump into some of the stories about what's happening in the real estate market. So let's, let's get into that. And as always, feel free to let us know where you're watching from. Love interacting with you guys. If you have questions or comments, be sure to leave them in the chat. Shana, uh, yes, we are glad that the MLS is back as well. So we'll try to be rolling out for any of you who have portals on, the, on our previous MLS. It's taking a little time, but we will uh, try to get those rolled out to your searches as we go here. All right. Let's get into some news. First article of the night uh, and what's going on in the hot, hot real estate market. Now, this was, we'll get into it, but headline says, Remax National Housing Report shows Cincinnati is the top for home sales. Let's, let's dive into this. Can I make this where? That's a little better. No, there we go. Okay. July typically signals a summer slump for the housing market, but Cincinnati topped a new national report for year over year sale increase. Despite the headwinds, the market is experiencing around the around the nation. Remax's national housing report for July found the Queen City ranked first among 50 uh, major U.S. markets surveyed for the largest percentage increase in home sales year over year. So what's it what's it judging here? It's judging July sales year over year. And in the top 50 major U.S. markets, Cincinnati was number one, number one for the largest percentage increase in home sales year over year. So that's units, uh, units sold year over year, number one in uh, in the nation. Cincinnati was only one of two metro areas, areas surveyed that saw a year over year increase with the other being, oh boy, help me out. I don't, I don't know. Cor Cordellin? Idaho. Sorry. I don't know that one. Um, so you're probably watching news all over the country saying uh, we're hitting a recession and housing markets going to crash and collapse. And certainly, as this report says, most markets are going down in terms of home sales. Cincinnati is one of only two from the top major metros that is showing year over year growth. And it was number one year over year sales were up 16.1% in Cincinnati this year. That's more than three percentage points higher than Cordell, Cordelline saw Cord, Cordelline, Cordelline. I don't know. According to the report by comparison, major metropolitan markets, including New York city and Cleveland saw more than 20% drops in year over year sales this July. Okay. So another city in Ohio, 
Cleveland, you might be thinking, hey, I'll move to Ohio. Maybe I'm looking at Columbus. Maybe I'm looking at Cleveland or Cincinnati. Cleveland saw a 20% drop. Cincinnati saw a 16% gain in home sales. 30, 36% difference. That's huge. That's an enormous difference. The top ranking comes as Cincinnati continues to be a national outlier for its red-hot uh, housing market. Nationwide home sales were down 16% from July 2022, signaling the fast-paced housing market that was largely fueled by COVID-19 is slowing down, returning to more normal numbers. So it's normal across the country, or it's returning to more normal numbers, but here in Cincinnati, not so much, not yet. But in Cincinnati, that's far from the case. Realtors told the Business Courier uh, it mirrors 2023 is on a similar pace to 2022, with the market continuing to favor sellers, it's making homes fly off the shelves in an average of three days and driving up median sales prices. Listing prices are up over 8% from last year, according to Remax's report. So, yeah, housies, you know, housing prices may be going down elsewhere. It's not happening here. Um, days on markets is still relatively short. Now, this is looking at July over July. August, I would say, is slowing down a little bit. That's a little bit more seasonal that we usually feel every year. But Cincinnati, comparatively, is still really high. Still really hot. Some local agents predicted with higher interest rates and a housing inventory crunch, 2023's housing market would finally start to slow down. Instead, buying has become even more competitive. How Are you guys tired of hearing this yet? With cash offers being used as a bargaining chip across home prices, homes of all price points. Cash is definitely still king. Uh, if you have it, it's going to make it a, a lot easier. Donna Deaton of Remax said the brokerage has noticed an uptick in buyers moving to Cincinnati. Hey, maybe that's to the Staniel Clanio, you know? I, we're, doing, we're doing all we can here. The city has jobs and affordable housing when compared to national peers. So two other big reasons, jobs, affordable housing, right? We talked about that before. Uh, when compared to national peers, making it attractive to individuals relocating from out of the state. Climbing interest rates have not been an issue in this market. Deaton said in a release, some builders have built up their inventory, which has helped with sales. Numerous down payment assistance programs are available within the city, making home ownership more affordable for first time home buyers. We're still in a very tight inventory situation, and we still see multiple offer situations on most homes. Accurate. Um, so that's where we're at. Cincinnati, number one top for home sales July over July. Okay. Um, so let's move on. Next article I want to hit up. Home builders have reason for optimism even in the wake of higher mortgage rates. Home builders are emerging from a slowdown that began last summer, even as mortgage rates continue to hit post-pandemic highs and affordability has locked out a significant number of prospective buyers. So the the reason I wanted to show you guys this article next is when you put it into context, the Cincinnati housing market, and that it's still, in terms of July, year over year, in the top US 50 markets, the hottest in the nation, uh, where's the inventory going to come from? Because inventory is still low, prices are still going up, it's still a seller's market. Well, the inventory is going to come from builders. That's where it needs to come from. So, all right, let's dig dig further into this into this article. Oops, let me give you a little bigger here. New construction now makes up one third of the available housing inventory in the United States, according to a recent analysis by Seattle-based Redfin. To be more precise, new builds made up 31% of the homes on the market in the second quarter of this year. Okay, so one third of all the, all the new home, all the homes being sold, all the housing inventory, so all, all the homes being sold, one third of it in the US is new home construction. It's not so much that home builders are suddenly ramping up their delivery of new homes. Rather, existing home inventory remains locked up as households that secured a 3% mortgage rate during the COVID-19 pandemic are reticent to put their homes up for sale. Guys, talk about this over and over again. And we saw, if you guys watched the live, you can go back and watch it last week. I showed the charts of what percent of Americans own what percent of inventory of equity in their house. It was 39% of Americans own their home outright. Another 31% own it, own at least 50% equity in their home. And uh, so 70% own at least 50% equity in their home were the numbers. The other thing was, um, oh, I'm trying to remember the numbers of how many loans are under 5%. I want to say it was like 80% of loans. So, 
And a lot of people are down as low as 3%. And so when you have that many people down and their rates and loans, they don't want to sell. Now, you could do the math on that and what you could do with that appreciation you've earned and equity. Say you say you want the nicer home, but you're like, ah, oh, the rates are 7%. I, want, I don't want to do it. Well, you can still do the math and say, well, yeah, but your equity went up 30% in just three years. So you can cash in that equity and get the nicer home that you want. That's one way you can get more inventory. The other way is builders being like, uh, we're going to fill in that gap. If people are going to hang on to their homes, then we can build more product. People are going to buy it. The 30-year fixed rate mortgage reached 7.09% at the end of last week, according to the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis. Before the pandemic, in the second quarter of 2019, new construction made up about 19% of homes in the market, according to Redfin. So it's a 50% greater. So it was at 20% before. Now it's at 30%. So that's a huge increase, right? Builders are like, we got to get in on this. Um, there's, there's demand there, and we can build, and they'll buy. So this is a pretty cool chart showing oh very cool okay the new construction share of market in q2 of 2023 compared to q2 of 2022 why don't we look at cincinnati since that's what we're looking at it's 23 24 percent of the market in 2023 whereas in 2022 it was 16 percent. so that's about right on par with that national increase of um going up because builders optimism is high uh, just looking at some other, so Albany, New York was 12 compared to, whoa, they doubled it in Albany, New York. Atlanta is 24 now, and it was at 21. Didn't really change much. Austin, holy cow, Austin, 35% of Austin is new construction uh, versus, and that was, no, sorry, that was 2022, and that's actually come down, no, wait, 30 yeah. Okay. So that's come down a little bit in Austin. So it's slowing down there. The the demand must be slowing down a little bit there in Austin. Where else? You guys uh, tell me a city you want to see and I'll see if I can peg it out here. What other cities are you looking at? Um, Tampa, Florida, 18% uh, in 2023 versus 17. So the market's kind of cooling there. So look at the big, the other big ones, 38% in San Antonio, 37% in Raleigh, 38% in Houston. What are some of the smaller ones? Where's the demand low? Chicago. No one's wanting to build in Chicago right now. Wow, this is really telling, isn't it? LA, 3.9% of overall inventory. New York, 4.9%. Pittsburgh, 3.4%. Interesting. San Francisco, 3.9%. San Jose, California, 5.3%. So when you don't have new construct, that's such an interesting chart. That's 2022. Let me look at 2023. Uh, Honolulu down low. Pittsburgh, very low. New York went up a tad bit, 5.5. San Francisco went up a tad to 7. Interesting, interesting. Okay, what a cool chart. Dayton, 9.8. So there's Cincinnati. So new construction happening here in Cincinnati went from 16 to 23. So builder optimism here. Uh, but it's but it's also, it's not all the, it's below average on terms of the national average, which is 30% of inventory. So you can still buy resale homes. And that was kind of what I showed my clients. Um, we looked at both this weekend, the ones from New York. And I said, okay, here's what you can get for let's, their budget. You know, I'm not naming names here. Let's say their budget was around, is between five and 600. And we went out to Union, Kentucky and looked at a couple neighborhoods there. Um, some newer neighbor, some newer neighborhoods where you get a little bit less square footage on the newer homes and some neighborhoods where the homes are about 20 years old and you're getting 30 over 3000 square feet plus a full basement. Some of those basements were finished. So there are some houses, 3,200, 3,300, I think was, was the biggest one. Uh, acreage was around point, you know, three, five to 0.5 acres. Um, so that's a four bedroom, two and a half to three and a half, um, uh, three and a half bathroom house, um, with, with a basement. And that's what you're getting here kind of in, in Northern Kentucky. So, okay, let me keep going down on this article after, after pulling back on their pipelines and seeing buyers walk away from contracts when interest rates began to rise last year, builders in 2023 are restarting their engines. 
Miami-based Lennar Corp's home deliveries grew 3% in its fiscal quarter and May 31, and the builder said at that time it expects it to deliver 68 to 70. All right, I'm not going to get into all this, but basically builders are like, yay, we can sell more houses. To address affordability challenges, builders continue to offer rate buy-downs. So this is an interesting thing. Now, I always tell buyers, and again, as we're talking new, new construction, Here's my disclaimer. I say it every time. You could go to the model home and they're going to take your information down, put you in the system and sell you a house. Or you can come to a realtor first and then you can go to the model home and then you'll have a realtor representing you through the home building uh, process, which I always recommend. It's not like we do. You're going to be working with both. But the nice thing about having a realtor is you have representation on your side. And if you go to the builder first, they might lock out that realtor. And so you're only working with their salesperson. So it doesn't cost you anything different. The builders aren't going to charge you more. The builders already have a commission for the realtors in their budget because that's part of their marketing budget. They want realtors to bring them new buyers. So I always say, um, get a realtor. <laughs> like it doesn't cost you anything. Why wouldn't you do that? Now, when it comes to interest rates, uh, and rate buy downs, which a lot of builders are doing. I always say, yes, go check, go check that out and run the numbers, but also work with your realtors, lenders, your preferred lenders, because you want to make sure you're comparing apples to apples. So you might have a rate, you know, a rate buy down, but how many points do you have in closing costs? You know, that's what you need to compare. And so you want to make sure you're, you're kind of running that by another, um, you know, another lender broker, basically, who can make sure you're looking at apples to apples because you might get a better rate, even though, um, you know, a lot of the builders are offering these buy downs. Um, traditionally, new homes are less affordable than existing homes. That is true, particularly for first time home buyers, but builders can buy down the rate. So if new homes are more less affordable than existing homes, why would you want to do that? Well, a lot of reasons, right? Number one, you get a brand new home. You can pick the floor plan that works best for you, that you want. You can kind of walk through the model homes and feel that. Um, you get to pick out all the finishes. It's that brand new smell, which everybody loves, right? It's like buying that new car smell. You're like, oh, this is great. No one else has ever lived in the home. Um, you're, you know, in terms of the market, you're not fighting a bunch of buyers for a resale home and multiple offers. That can be very stressful, um, especially if, if you're trying to do it from out of town, you can generally time it up a little bit better with moving out of your house. So if you know the building process is going to take six to eight months or something like that, you can kind of plan for that when you want to buy the home and time it with the school year. There's a lot of reasons why you would want to still buy new construction over a resale home. Now, if the other things are more important to you, like say, no, I need the square footage and I'll do the updates of the new carpets and the new backsplash and the new counters and, you know, because you still, even though it costs a little bit less, you might want to do some updates in the house. If the house is 20 years, old, 20, 20 years old or more, you might have to do a new furnace. You might have to do uh, a new roof coming up soon. So, you know, make sure you're comparing everything. Again, this is why I say work with a realtor because you can kind of like gauge what's the best value for you uh, as you're thinking new construction versus a resale home. Okay. Uh, in fact, many builders in recent months have had offer rate buy downs to remain competitive with other builders. Still, there are limits to even what major builders can offer in the way of rate buy downs. For example, it's not feasible to cut a seven and a half mortgage rate to four and a half percent. Yeah. And if they're doing a, a buy down, it might be like a two, a two one. So maybe they're doing like, I'm trying to remember this if I'm saying it correctly, a two point buy down for one year or, or like it like scales up over two years or something like that. So um, Danny, what is up? Who day is right? Our boys, two more weeks, right? Two more weeks till we play the brownies. Super excited. It's going to be a fun, fun year. All right. So there's new construction. Builders are excited. Um, and when you're looking at inventory in a tight mount in a tight market, which Cincinnati still is, in fact, the number one hottest market when compared to the other top 50 metros, um, new construction remains a really good option. And you saw here in Cincinnati, you know, the amount of overall inventory went from 16 to 23 percent. So there's some inventory to choose from. And sometimes one other pro tip here, if builders, if they get too optimistic, then they start to get like if they finish a house and no one's bought it yet on their market line, they start to get a little bit antsy. They're like, "Ooh, we, we got to get that one sold so we can do the next one. And that's another opportunity where you could you might be able to get them down in price. 
you might be able to get them down you know, on the incentives on the rate buy down. There might be some incentives there. Now, the incentives, if you start from scratch, is usually they'll give you incentives on um, on your upgrades of the house. So your level, your finishes, or if you buy, let's say you buy 20 grand in upgrades, they might give you tw- an additional 20 grand or something like that. They, they prefer to do that because they can kind of hide those costs a little bit more. And also they want, you know, when you're selling a new subdivision, the last thing the builder wants to do is kind of come down on price. They want to keep those prices higher for the future buyers as they're building out a development as opposed to give anyone a reduction in price. But you might be able to get incentives in other ways. Make sense? So again, work with your realtor and uh, we'll help you find those things. Okay, so new construction in Cincinnati. I want to talk about this one that's coming, which is cool. Traditions Building Group breaks ground on new College Hill community. So where is College Hill? In fact, let's do that real quick. Uh, You know what? It's on the map. I'll get there in just a second. But here's a a look at Station Court City Homes. They will be located in the heart of College Hill, adjacent to the Business and Entertainment District, and are being offered for sale by Traditions Building Group. So um, we, f- we focus, we've featured Drees on the channel. We featured uh, Fisher Homes, both great um, builders, but they're more production builders, right? So they're doing a lot of homes. Traditions is a little bit higher quality. It's going to be a little bit more expensive, but a little bit higher quality, I would say. Out in Rivers Point, I did a video of Traditions Builders, and I was really impressed with their level of finishes, with their insulation, just the quality of the home and overall was very, very sound. So I'd like to get out here and do another video with them, but... Um, if you dig back into our channel, you can find, um, ah, maybe I'll put it in the notes, but there, there is a video I did on traditions uh, out in Rivers Point in Hebron's, Hebron, Kentucky. One of the region's largest home builders has broken ground on a new residential development in the booming College Hill neighborhood. Traditions Building Group is developing Station Court, a residential community located at the corner of Hamilton and Avenue in North Bend Road in College Hill. Grounds breaking ceremony was held August 16th. The neighborhood will include 31 detached residences as part of Tradition City Series communities, uh, which are located in historic, walkable urban neighborhoods throughout Cincinnati. So this is why I wanted to feature this, because a lot of times people who come to me and they're looking at new construction because they're tired of the resale homes, uh, but they don't want to necessarily live out in the burbs. They're like, uh, Eric, what are my choices here? Do I have to buy a lot and like build something in the middle? Well, that's why I wanted to bring this. Uh, I'm excited about this development because traditions uh is is looking for these different historic walkable urban neighborhoods that they can develop throughout cincinnati and here's another one's just launch, launching the homes boast modern distinctive architecture a 15-year uh le lead silver tax abatement so you get a tax abatement when you buy it customizable interiors private decks and two car attached garages according to the release the homes will start in the upper 500s they'll range from two to three bedrooms and two and a half to three and a half baths. There will be several floor plan options and homes will start at 2000 square feet. So very cool. Uh, Station court will build off of college, college Hills growing momentum while also offering some of its own amenities. There'll be a community park and walkable streetscape all within reach of college Hills shopping and entertainment district food and drink options like the recently opened Luminary by La Terza and James Beard semifinalist Kiki are down the street. So you can walk to coffee shop, walk to restaurants, walk, walk to pubs, all, um, all down here, which is honestly harder to do in a lot of, of the Fisher and Dries communities where you're out more in the burbs and maybe you're choosing those communities because of the school districts and so forth. Station Court will be will build off of, I uh, just read that, sorry. Station Court will add to the mounting number of living options in College Hill. So here's a look at them, and I'm going to pop over to their site in just a second so you can see some more. Uh, Doug Hing- uh, Hinger, 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 president of Traditions, said the home builder has been working on this site for six years, and soon Station Court residents will finally be able to add to the energy in College Hill. Hamilton Avenue in College Hill has become one of the most dynamic and exciting neighborhood shopping and entertain- di- entertainment districts in the city. Uh, College Hill isn't emerging. College Hill has arrived. So I'm going to have to get out there for you guys. I'm going to have to get a video to you and show you what it looks like, get you little drone shots and show you what some of these restaurants and and bars look like in shopping so you can get a feel for it if you're interested in more of an urban, walkable, uh, new construction option. So here is the Traditions website. 
And I'm going to pull me off a little bit here just so you can kind of see it. Let's see if I can full screen this. Creating Cincinnati's most distinctive lifestyle communities since 1978. Homeowners, so happy they gave us diamonds. New, new available now. Distinctive, this is kind of what they're focusing on. Distinctive lifestyle-oriented master plan communities that create convenience, community, and connection with outdoors. So every build that they do, they're trying to think through convenience, community, and connection with the outdoors. Um, if you go over to their guiding pr principles, uh, I think this is really cool. We believe in building neighborhoods and homes with timeless design and enduring value. We respect your need for ease and convenience. Our homes are built in walkable communities, centrally located with easy access to parks and recreation shopping, business centers, schools, and major highways. We see nature as a necessity, not just an amenity. With ample green space that includes corner parks, walking trails, and preserved natural surroundings, it's easy to connect with nature. So, um, and then they got, let's go to their communities, their city series. You know, they've got plenty around town. And they're also in the villages at River Point, Linden Hill and Anderson Township. They're in Madeira. And their city series here, Station Court. So here's a little bit what College Hill is looking like right now. Here's what the homes look like. You get the tax abatement price in the upper 500s. Here's a little bit of the walkable neighborhood. So there's Luminary. You've got a salon, a jeweler. Uh, let's see here. Fern, Love on a Leash. There's uh, Yep Fitness. So you can see all within a few blocks here. There's a cafe, uh, Hops and Vines. So yeah, uh, there's a theater shop few other restaurants sleepy bee cafe so yeah i've got to get down here and do a video for you guys so you can feel this out but here is yep tax abatement what that looks like so yeah if you guys are interested in kind of urban living new construction in the 500s in a walkable neighborhood then this might be a great opportunity for you um feel free to give us give us a call we would love to help you on that oh come on i mean you gotta that's Pretty puppy. Super fun. So there you go. There's a look at that. Um, Second Timothy 4-2 Ministries. Checking in from Miami, Florida. What's up, guys? Thanks for watching. Appreciate you checking in. As always, if you guys, anyone else watching, feel free to let us know where you're watching from and any questions you might have about the Cincinnati or living in Cincinnati area. Would love to help you with that. I love doing this and having you guys check in. It's, it's one of my favorite things to do. So uh, on the map here, where is College Hill? So basically, you're just shooting up one, 127. So you would be taking across the bridge, 75 north, getting off at Hamilton Avenue. So it's just north of Uptown, and north side is College Hill right here. So you're probably, you know, 10, you're 15 minutes to downtown. You are 30 minutes from CVG Airport, 20 minutes if you want to go over to Rookwood or Kenwood for shopping. 20 minutes to Western Hills. So there you go. Um, would love to help you again with that. All right. Let me get out of this real quick and just hit one or two other things before we check out. Again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the chat. Um, one other exciting new development that's coming in, FC Cincinnati's $300 million West End project is slated to go before City Planning Commission next month so, so it's not uh completed yet we'll get into this but sd cincinnati you know they've had to be very careful with the west end at large because the west end you know that neighborhood was really it was divided when interstate 75 went in and it really just kind of split that community in two and so when the idea of sc cincinnati putting their stadium right in the middle of west end again it was you know reasonably slow so there was a lot of concern from the residents of the west end like hey you just want to develop in here again and we already had this thing where it blew up the neighborhood and i think a lot of it was actually driven by the heart of some people um who wanted to help bring something good to the neighborhood and um you know and, and help bring development and bring some energy back into the development and so 
FC Cincinnati, if you've been at the stadium, is so awesome. It's like ranked, I think it's like ranked like one of the top soccer stadiums in the world. It's beautifully designed. But just getting into this article, I, I just because this is an exciting development project downtown on the West End. FC Cincinnati has submitted conceptual plans to the city of Cincinnati for its proposed West End mixed use district, kickstarting the process to clinch zoning changes and set site parameters before starting to build this massive. $300 million project. So you can kind of see what this looks like, um, which looks to me like this is the Southeast uh, portion of the stadium. And this is like Washington park right over here, I believe. Um, but there's some major, you know, some major zoning changes and developments that would come in. FC Cincinnati and its partners are requesting a major amendment to the concept plan and development program statement that encompasses TQL stadium where the major league soccer team plays. If approved, the statement, would be amended to change the zoning of about 5.6 acres north of the stadium to plan development and expand the plan development boundary to the north. Or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's on the north. Those changes would encapsulate additional private-owned properties. Okay. So I'm not going to get into the, all the details of this. I'm trying to see if there's additional photos here. But I just thought that was something to keep an eye on to see that development. Uh, I think it's just this one photo here. So there's going to be retail and entertainment venues. I think they want to put in a concert or like a music hall there, a hotel, some condos, office space, residential apartments. So, and that's a big piece. We've, we've talked about that on the channel already of trying to get more residential living downtown. I listened to a, the podcast that's so Cincinnati this week with uh, John Dietrich. I want to say his name is that could be wrong, but he's the gentleman city planner, uh, structure, uh, city, um, I'm blanking on the engineer structure, not structural engineer, uh, civic engineer. Maybe he helped with Fort Washington way. He helped with the streetcar. He was like paramount in doing so many things in Cincinnati. And they were talking to him about, um, you know, downtown. They were talking to him about the next stages for the banks. They were asking about the next stages for the streetcar as well as, um, you know, the new convention center and just different things they could do, kind of picking his brain. And the big thing they were asking him about that they were trying to pick his brain on was the um, the bridge forward movement to try to recapture 17 acres or so as the new Brent Spence bridge is going to be built. Um, I guess it's not the Brent Spence, the new bridge that's going to be built just to the west of the Brent Spence. So that was a really interesting interview. You might want to check that out as well. All right, guys, um, let's do a quick market update here. I'm going to look at the Northern Kentucky MLS before we wrap up. Again, if you have any questions or want to shout out before uh, we leave here, I'm going to wrap up in just a few minutes. But just giving you a feel of what's happening in the market, and this is still looking at kind of July numbers, listing prices, so we don't have all of August yet. But what I am seeing in the market, and I wanted to focus on this days on market, is this, some, this is something we feel seasonally throughout. And I can't show you on... Cincinnati's yet because like I said, we're transferring all this data over. So hopefully as time comes, I'll give you some Cincinnati data as well. But for now I can give you this Northern Kentucky data and you're seeing the days on market climb from June to July. And my guess, and this is the cumulative days on market. So this is if this factors in before you saw three days on market from the article, this factors in all of the properties and properties that have been sitting for a long, 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 long time. And maybe they go pending for a little bit and then go back on, or maybe they go withdrawn for a little bit and then go back on. So the average is up, but, but what it's important to see is I think you're going to see a climb here in, in August. Um, and I, I mentioned this last week, this could be a good time to buy because sellers towards the end of summer, if their house is sitting for a few weeks, they get a little bit antsy because they're thinking maybe I missed the season, which they did a little bit. And, oh, no, what if like something major happens and I can't get it sold through the winter? So now this is a time of year that is a decent time to buy. I know it's hard if you have families and kids, it's a really hard time to buy um, if you're moving right in the middle of the school year. But that's a reason why, right, is because most families are hunkered down back into the school session, which we every, everyone basically in northern Kentucky, Cincinnati has started now in the last week or two. And so this is a good time where you might, if you spot some of those houses that have been out there, you know, 10, 20, 30 days. Cause when I'm, when I'm scheduling some showings, I mentioned that I did some showings in union Kentucky this week. And even before I went and showed the property, I had some of the agents reaching out and say, hope you like it, you know, which means that they're, 
you know, they're a little bit nervous and like, what's your feedback like right away. And even they'll, they'll throw out there that seller is flexible, sellers flexible on price. And so, um, that's what I'm saying. Days on market creeps up a little bit. Those home prices usually hit their peak in June, July, and then they come down a little bit in August because for all the reasons I just mentioned. All right, Jackie, what is up? Hi, I have a question. Wonderful. If you are behind apartment payment, how would you tell the landlord? Uh, that's a great question. Um, generally, my best answer to that is honesty is the best policy. Um, you know, I know that's not fun to do, but maybe you can get a little grace. Maybe you could work something out with the landlord. I know I have tenants myself. I would be, I would be much happier to know what's going on with my tenant than to just not be getting rent. And so maybe you could work something out with them. I just, even though that's a scary thing, I think uh, honesty is usually the best policy when it comes to working with landlords or even, you know, even with mortgages. I, I work, you know, I do some investing. And I do some marketing on the We Buy Houses side, if you see those signs going around. And when people are facing foreclosure, even, I say the same thing. You need to reach out to the bank and let them know what's going on, especially if you're thinking about selling the home for cash. Because you don't want to get foreclosed on and get your credit nailed, right? Same with, same with you know, getting kicked out, uh, you know, or if you get evicted from, from an apartment. You don't want to get your credit dinged. You don't want to see any kind of foreclosure or anything like that, because that's going to dog you for years. So honesty is the best policy. Try to get in front of it. That would be my advice. You're absolutely welcome, Jackie. Thank you for watching. And hopefully one day, get caught up on rent, save a little money. We'll help you buy a house. We'd love to do that one day. Uh, that'd be awesome. So thanks for watching. Any other questions, guys, before we check out? I am going to, I don't know, um, try to bounce out of here, get back to the kids. If not, thank you so much for watching. We're two weeks away from the start of the NFL season. I think I mentioned last week, I may be shifting the times on this, whether it's on Saturday or, um, but I watch, uh, in fact, I was just talking with my friends today. Um, my church, there's a bunch of dads. We are usually doing a lot of things with our kids or around the house on Sunday. So it's hard to just sit and like, uh, take out a three and a half hour chunk of time to watch an NFL game. So oftentimes I record that game or watch it later. I don't record it. I watch it on the NFL, whatever it is, game day or whatever. And we like go watch it at eight o'clock at night. So we could do that. I could still probably do this on Sunday, but then I'm really scared that Danny McElroy, uh, which I don't blame you, Danny. I don't, I don't, I'm not hating on you. I love all my Bengals fans out there, but I don't know how I could do a YouTube live if the game's at one o'clock and I'm trying to watch at eight o'clock without people being like, yeah, we beat the Browns. Um, so. I think this this might be changing to a Saturday evening. I don't know. So just keep an eye on on, on that. Uh, we'll we'll try to figure that out. Or maybe maybe it'll be a Thursday. I I don't know. I'm gonna figure it out. So you guys, thank you again as always so much for watching. Um, yeah, you get it. You know, I don't. If you have any any ideas on how I can do it, I mean, I, I don't know how to do a live. And these these are dad problems, right? First world dad problems. Like we do it to try to cut down on commercials, you know, do what we got to do with our dad. We all have like a billion kids, <laughs> you know, it's kind of hard to just tell my wife, I'm just going to drink beer and watch a game for the next four hours and uh, do an NFL live. Oh, what do you mean? Like watch the game while doing the video. Is that what you mean? Or just watch the games live. Heck yeah, go Bengals. Bang, bang goes. <laughs> Talk about the game after. Yeah, I, yes. Um, but that means I have to watch it in the daytime first. I could do it. Um, I mean, I'll definitely talk about the game. Like, if I did this on Saturdays, I would definitely talk about the previous week game, but, but you guys would probably be tired of talking about it then. I did on Facebook for a while. I did a lot of like post game reviews because I just, if it's one thing that where I'm going to spend some time enjoying some entertainment, I do like talking about it quite a bit. Burrow is for sure the goat. Let's get that calf up and going. Calf, calf. We don't want any Randy Bullock, CZ calves. You, you serious Bengal fans know what I'm talking about. What do you guys think? Little game preview. I know we're early. 
Um, I listened to an AFC North roundup by on by the athletic guys. I forget their names, but it was incredible. It was so deep and good. And, I, and they made a case for each team in the AFC North. I'm like, man, they're all now. They were clearly saying they were because they were saying what every team's goals should be for the year. And they're like, yeah, the Bengals should be like either in the Super Bowl or winning the Super Bowl. So we are a tier above, but there are also good teams in the North. I'm not going to lie. And, uh, you know, Baltimore will be rolling out a new offense. Uh, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. So Baltimore's good. We got to figure out. I, I think, you know, they, they kind of clamped us down in that playoff game. That was scary with it, with doubling of chase and burrow, but uh, chase and NT, I mean, uh, so we need, uh, you know, we need that tight end. We need, I don't know what I'm thinking about Charlie Jones. I think he's decent in the slot. I was hoping for maybe a little bit more, but also we haven't seen Burrow throw anything. So I'm hoping like my hope for Charlie Jones is that he's like a Wes Welker type, um, where when you've got the most, cons the most accurate quarterback in the NFL, Joe Burrow, it's just a Brady to Welker kind of thing. And if you have that in the middle, plus you got T and chase on the sides, then we don't need a tight end. Um, you're actually in Cincinnati. I wanted to see the cell. Oh, I can go back to that real quick. The you mean the new construction percentage in Miami? Yeah, let me go to that. Okay. So Q2 of 2022 in Miami was 5.7% of homes were new construction in 2022 in Miami. And looks and it went up slightly 8.1 so they're building more in miami too i don't know too much about that market so you know i know a lot of people have moved to miami so maybe there's just not room for a lot of new construction i don't know but it's still that's an increase obviously um interesting this is the, the the la thing gosh end of 2022 they just crushed themselves didn't they so interesting um our Kansas still a threat. What? <laughs> what? What does that mean? Uh, are Kansas still a threat? KC? Is that what you mean? Yeah, I would say KC is still a threat. Um. Yeah. Hey guys, I could do I could do Bengals talk all day long. I I've been. Um, like Kansas City, yes. Kansas City, if you're talking about them still being a threat, they are very much a threat <laughs> and will be. And so that's why I think the, you know, you got to play for the one seed this year. Like we got to have them in Paycor for that AFC championship game because that's probably what it will be again. I mean, betting not betting favorites, I would say, is going to be Kate, Casey and and the Bengals again, unless something screwy happens. But uh, I don't want to go to I don't want to go to Burrowhead Arrowhead again, right? I want them. I don't think Patrick Mahomes has ever played a road playoff game. Is that right? Something crazy like that. Like he's never played on the road in the playoffs, which is insane. And Burrow's won three or four games on the road in the playoffs already. So um, yes, Kansas City City still definitely a threat. Um, well, sweet. Here's hoping to a Burrow contract this week, right? Happy Joe Burrow contract. We'd like to see that in the books. We'd like to see him here in Cincinnati for years to come. We'd like to see if we can get T Higgins figured out. Do you guys want to sign T? I'm curious about what, what Duke and Katie will do with that. Um, I mean, love him as a player. Just trying to figure out, does Joe Burrow need a T Higgins number two? I would say no, but I also really like T Higgins. So, Casey was up. This is our year for sure. So uh, I'm hoping we go all the way. I think we can do it. Expectations have never been higher. Um, yes. So awesome. Cool guys. Thanks for watching. Oh, Casey. Nice to see him pop on. Other team Stanio um, excitement really quick is we're looking to grow the team. So as this continues to grow, as more and more people are moving to Cincinnati, I can't do everything. So I'm looking to bring on agents. And so, uh, Casey, someone's going to be joining the team really quick. Um, super excited to have you come on. And uh, there had a few other guys reach out this week that we talked to. 
who are like, Hey, yeah, we want to get on the team too. So team Sanyo could be going, uh, could be growing exponentially here <laughs> really soon with some extra agents to help you guys out. Uh, what's really fun is all of everyone right now is dads. So that's super fun. Yeah. Can't wait to have you here, Casey, for sure. So let's, let's do it, man. Let's rock it. So awesome. All right, guys, I am out for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I'll put the links in, in the chat once this thing gets published and, um, we'll figure out the time, I guess. No, wait, next week I have a wedding. I have to officiate a wedding in two weeks. I need to type that wedding out. <laughs> so that's two weeks. That'll be after the Browns game. I think the wedding's on Saturday. We're good. We'll figure it out. Keep it posted. Thank you guys so much for watching. <laughs> we'll see you next time.